there, Halloween fans. Welcome to our first episode of this Haunt Fix series. Uh, if you watched our introduction, you know that the idea of this is to try to kind of share some spots where we find Halloween love in the off season. Uh, if you follow along with their stuff, you know we're big Halloween fans. Parks and cons, uh, we're always looking for that kind of dark side of things as we're covering events and always looking for those haunt fixes. And so we're starting out at the grandfather of them all, Knott's Berry Farm, obviously not Scary Farm, being a huge event here. So you might wonder like, what's this location about? Why are we filming over in the, uh, this is actually the parking lot for some employees, some hotel, uh, and kind of in the middle over by Escape. And the reason why is because it's a good place to start because that's where kind of the history of parks and cons on the park side begins is right at Escape. Uh, and so prior to having the site be parks and cons, covering parks, uh, it was just conventions. We focused everything on conventions, had a great time with that. But we loved theme parks, particularly we loved scary farm, haunt things in general. And as we would wander by, we'd park over here, stay at the hotel. I mean, for years, for years, back since the mid nineties, we'd been coming to Knott's Scary Farm on Halloween night. But one thing we noticed over the years is we would park and visit Knott's is things happened over by Escape. We would see during the Halloween season, actors in between the cracks over there. Sometimes jack-o'-lanterns would be you know perched over the fences and things like that and you know eventually as we decided to add in the parks it was really all about getting behind the scenes access to knots because we learned there was something called scare school and that sometimes they would let outlets uh visit you know i think the first time we saw anything about it was our friend uh rick over at tpa doing video and it's like how do we get into Escape? and it was like well let's add the parks part so for us a lot of the pursuit of theme parks we cover all these you know springtime things summertime things Christmas, all of that. But it really began here right at Escape. And Escape has become so important kind of in our history. Like it literally in 2020, when there was so much uncertainty, there was no scary farm. Uh, and as we talked amongst ourselves with our friend Ted, and we're like, well, this is before there was a taste of Halloween. We're like, well, if everything's closed, we'll just get as close to Escape as we can. And that'll just be our Halloween night on that October 31st. So it's a place that always kind of gives us a haunt fix. And that is really what this series is about, is about places that make us feel some of that Halloween spirit. And so some of them, like Escape, may not mean anything for you or any Scary Farm fan for that matter. Uh, but some hopefully will. Hopefully we'll be able to share some things that were like, oh yeah, that's definitely very visual reminder. So some of these things will be, you know, maybe some personal stories, some uh, connections that we have from experiences and others hopefully will be things that uh, really bring you that haunt uh, experience, even if you've never uh, been there yourself or have no kind of emotional attachment with it. So with that said, let's swing the camera around here. I won't spend long on this, but I will say the Knott's Hotel always gives us that kind of scary farm uh, reminder and that haunt fix in a way throughout the year, just because it's the, you know, if we only stay at the Knott's Hotel one time a year, it's for Scary Farm. I mean, we'd like to stay more often and uh, definitely would like to stay every time we come to Scary Farm. But for us, it doesn't matter what time of year it is. If we're here, it feels a little bit like Halloween just because you have know, gone to so many pre-scare dinners there and uh, have stayed there on so many Halloween nights. All right, so any fan of Scary Pot Farm probably is very familiar with E-Gate over here, at least if you're the type that might watch a YouTube video like this or watch our haunt and build videos. But E4 over here is like a gift year round. It always feels Halloween because it lets us look straight into the back lot here where we're able to see, you know, the Mariner show up as we get closer to the opening time for depth. So we're able to see painting over on Paranormal Inc. I mean, even this time of year, We've got some spooky trees back there and the jack-o'-lanterns will show up and things like that. So year round gives us that little view into Scary Farm. And again, during the pandemic, this was an area as everything was closed, couldn't go inside the parks for those big chunks of time. We just kind of walk over here and look through and see what we can see. So uh, hopefully they never block off E-Gate because I feel like E-Gate is a gift year round for those of us that are addicted to that haunt fix. All right, now the Emporium, Longtime Knott's fans know that there is a fun, spooky village from Department 56 in there. We will take a look at that in a minute. But another significant thing uh, for me about this place is uh, when we finally reach that goal of getting media to be able to do like behind the scenes stuff, it was such a huge deal. I still have a picture just holding, you know, the lanyard from the media past stuff. So that was September, I believe it was 24th. 
2014. And so as soon as we got it, it was over at the employment officer we checked in. We scrambled over here to uh, get ourselves situated and get that lanyard out and just appreciate it. I mean, that was one of the moments in all the stuff we've done with Parks and Cons. It was like everything after it was like gravy. All the work of the years has just been like, oh, everything, if we just got one year of behind the scenes access to Scary Farm, one year of being media at Scary Farm, everything else is gravy. So always like really appreciative of that moment. It's kind of one of our big Parks and Cons moments. But that said, again, in addition to that being kind of a personal haunt fix, having a Halloween village for the Department 56 stuff year round is always fantastic to see. So let's head on in and look at that. All right, they got the Christmas music playing now and they've got Christmas displays out year round. But this is the one, I mean, it is incredibly rare for us to come to Knott's. And if you follow our stuff, you know we come to Knott's a lot and not come by and check this out. Cause you got all the stuff Halloween fanatics love in one display here. Even this guy lurching above. And especially in one of those times of year where Halloween is so far off, like right now as we're filming this, I find it particularly great to come by here and see all this stuff. And they've sold the Department 56 Scary Farm signs here before. We've got one of those a while back. Actually, I don't see it out right now, but normally it is, even if it's just a display one and not for sale. But it's one of those real concentrated forms of Halloween. That's a real good fix if you're at Knott's Berry Farm. And then behind over here, always kind of fluctuating in and out of different Elvira products the last year or so. And then just other Department 56 items, some of them that are on display and others that are not, but they've just always got a Halloween spot. Sometimes it moves to the front, the side, it's currently over here, but it's always around. And this is that spot we were talking about earlier with the lanyard. This is that bench where we came, came to this door, got ourselves situated, took our picture out here and we were set to go in. Now outside the door, this has been one that's been a fix over the years, depending on the time of year. Uh, when they went through the transition to Waxworks, uh, we got to see some of the build happening early from behind here, you saw movement. Uh, when it transitioned to the uh, lights out version of Trick or Treat, remember hearing the music uh, that they were using in like early February. And it was just something to be walking by and hearing that Halloween spooky music playing. But we always stop here and kind of look around. I don't think Waxworks is going anywhere for a little while, but you know, at some point they'll start building that extended hall there. And that's always one of those signals is, again, people that follow this type of video work, a lot of times we get excited about like a pile of lumber, you know, because it's next to a location. We're like, hey, that's gonna be part of an attraction we love someday. So definitely a spot we always check out on the way into Knott. All right, so now we're in the park and how can this not feel like a haunt fix? For anybody that's a fan of this event here at Scary Farm. Uh, and so as we make our way onto the Ghost Town streets though, we are not gonna do much of anything with Ghost Town in this episode because we are saving that for a special episode. Got some fun things planned for our finale for the year to do all about the Ghost Town streets. So we'll return to Knott's uh, and hopefully some of these fun things kind of come to fruition and we'll do a lot more on the streets. So uh, we'll come back to that. I think we'll look at the magic shop today and then we'll get into a little bit more of some of the fun vibes and the history on the streets itself as we come back for that season finale. Uh, what will it be, six weeks out? All right, so let's make a left here. All right, Spurs definitely is that haunt fix for us year round, uh, primarily because you know we come to so many pre-scare dinners over the years, and uh, since it's been this location, I don't even know how many we've been to, but it always is uh, special for us, uh, even when we're here for other random things throughout. But that said, the real reason we're going down this way is more than Spurs is heading into guest services. Because if you've ever been to guest services, you know they feature the various seasons of the year and a few pieces of artwork on the wall, some cool photography. And uh, there's some scary farm visuals there. We want to show you because it's not much. But again, when jack-o'-lanterns are all put away, you take what you can get, right? So let's check it out.
So we'll do the bulk of Ghost Town, as I said, in the uh, season finale for this series. But uh, we did want to check out the Ghost Town Toy Junction, or as many call it, the Magic Shop. Because it's really become a seemingly scary farm central year-round in terms of merchandise. Uh, this year, they have not dropped the prices, not done any discounts on merch. It seems like they're just going to keep kind of the newest and some classic merchandise there uh, throughout the year. Or at least that's been the approach since Halloween ended. So let's show you what they've uh, done to kind of make the place uh, welcoming for the Scary Farm fans. See, they've gotten rid of the wall of Funko Pops over here and it's really embracing scary farm all out here which is cool i mean i miss the discounted shirts and hopefully there's some sales or discounts eventually here but it is kind of nice to be able to come by and pick up a shirt mesmer shirt from this year if somebody missed it or attractions or any of those also my favorite thing and this will be fun year round is all the posters All right, so we make our way over to Camp Snoopy and year round, we've got this little gem for us at least, and that we enjoy seeing is just the pumpkin hanging over the facade there from Pumpkin Eater. So in general, I mean, when the build time of year comes, you can see people working all the way around, but the pumpkin is easier to see from a little bit of a distance here their year round. If we go to the front over here, different angle. All right, and then over here by Accelerator, it's the gift that keeps on giving all year long. There's always something going on over at this spot, whether it was when Shadowlands, Black Magic, obviously Mesmer, you can see the uh, big top there kind of peeking out, but it's a fun one to watch whether it's from the street fences or a lot of times through the queue or when Accelerator is down or the line is just too long you can watch it from over here But it's always fun to watch even though like for next year. We know Mesmer's coming back It's not gonna be any big surprise when they start putting things back together It'll be fun kind of indicate something once you know that people are working on some fun Halloween stuff so a year ago, this door would not have been part of our haunt fix. We didn't really associate it with anything related to Scary Farm or anything like that, but it definitely uh, has now with the Goring 20s and obviously the reference to the Blind Tiger and all the incredible work the talent did over here. It just kind of brought this whole area to life every night. And so it's funny how all of a sudden now I've noticed since uh, Halloween season has ended, it's like, oh, this kind of feels like a, a you know a bit of that haunt fix like when we go through here i picture the actors doing their things and the door kind of is just that signal prior to that though one thing in this area is it was a part of the park where we would often hear haunted carousel a song that is to me like the most haunt fix song of the year it's something i listen 12 months out of the year uh, and Haunted Carousel, something I first heard in, uh, on the Season Pass podcast is Doug Barnes and Robert Coker and them would come out and do these massive Scary Farm behind the scenes podcasts. Uh, and I believe they recorded them around this area at times, various places as well. Uh, but in the background, you hear this awesome Scary Farm song. And it was like, man, what is it? And eventually I was able to isolate it, track it down, buy it, listen to it nonstop. Uh, but this area was always a spot where, for whatever reason, that song would play. And I would think about the Season Pass doing their stuff here. Season Pass was also just an influence on kind of incorporating park stuff at all because they didn't even really think about the idea of covering parks uh, before listening to their stuff. And like, oh, they would do these three, four-hour episodes on Scary Farm. And it was like, oh, wow, okay, so this is a thing. There's, uh, you know, people that talk to the people that make all this stuff. And so Haunted Carousel, a big deal to me. It'll always kind of be a, you know, Parks and Cons cornerstone song and definitely a big old haunt fix. All right, thank you so much for joining us in this episode one. We should have episode two up in this series a week from today. Uh, that will not be focused on knots. That will be in a different location. So all of them uh, will be in different spots until the finale come back to Knott's for the Ghost Town Street. So please let us know what are some things we uh, miss? What are some things that maybe don't spark that Halloween feel for me or not enough at least to include in this video that for you are like, oh, that's a must for me when I go to Knott's. It's something that I always feel Halloween. Let us know. Would be interested to hear 
We will have more content also on our social channels with all sorts of stuff as we find uh, Halloween in the wild throughout the years. So follow along with us there. Please like, subscribe, let people know about what we do. The more people will find us. Until next time, we'll see you online somewhere.